So how many times have you opened a magazine, looked an article online, or watched a YouTube video where the aquarium looked like this? Or this, or like this? These are all stunning aquascaped aquariums, but they all have one thing in common. You never see a speck of algae. And that can make things difficult for us regular fish keepers, because it sets up an expectation we can never really achieve. It's like me hoping one day I might look like this guy, or this guy, or this guy. No matter how hard I try, it's never going to happen. And not looking like those fabulous people doesn't make me a bad person, in the same way that having some algae in my aquarium doesn't make me a bad fish keeper. In fact, it often surprises people to find out that algae is not only not bad, it's potentially beneficial to an aquarium. So why are we all led to believe that algae is such a bad thing? Well, it, yes, it can be unsightly. If it takes over your aquarium, it can look terrible. But it can also help tone down an aquarium. It can help it look more natural. When algae grows on the rocks, on the pieces of wood, on any other decorations, it helps soften them and make them look more natural. Personally, I like to leave algae to grow on any pane of glass that I'm not looking through. So on an aquarium where I just look through the front, I will keep the front clear, but let the algae grow on the sides and the back. If I have an aquarium that I view from two angles, again, I'll keep those two panes of glass clear, but I'll allow algae to grow on the rest. It gives the tank a much more natural feel, in my opinion. Plus, there are other benefits to algae. Shrimp will spend an amazing amount of their day just combing through algae, looking for biofilm, for micro crustaceans, for anything they can find to eat. Algae provides the perfect place for biofilm to develop, which in turn provides the perfect feeding grounds for a shrimp. Not only that, much like live plants, algae actually processes waste. Algae will absorb unwanted nutrients from the water, such as nitrates, making the aquarium safer and cleaner for a shrimp to live in. Now, as I say, there are different types of algae. Often when you first set up an aquarium, you'll get a brown diatom algae which is a, is a light brown, uh, very loose algae that sticks to things. And that will actually go away given time. As the tank matures, that will typically die off and, and disappear. Or you could drop an Otosynclus or two in. Otosynclus are famed for their algae eating ability. Another algae we often get is known as green dust algae. And that grows on pretty much every surface, but it just wipes off with a sponge or with a magnetic glass cleaner. You can just clean it, it comes off very easily. That's an algae I, I welcome. I, I don't mind that at all. I can just wipe it off the glass when I do my water changes. And when it grows on the rocks, as it is in this aquarium up here, it just softens them and makes them look more natural. Another algae we often suffer with is blackbeard algae. And blackbeard algae typically grows when we have perhaps too much iron or too many nitrates in the water. And this can be an incredibly persistent algae. And there aren't many things that will eat it. But if you get yourself some Amano shrimp, add those to your cherry shrimp tank, Amano shrimp will eat blackbeard algae and they can help keep it under control. If you've got an infestation of blackbeard algae, if everything's covered in it, you would need an army of Amano shrimp to deal with it. But if you've just seen the starts of it, if you're just starting to see it on decorations, grab yourself half a dozen Amano shrimp, add them to your tank and they'll help keep that under control. So whilst we don't have to fear algae, there are some things we can do to help keep it under control. Uh, ensuring we don't overfeed our aquarium is one way because algae will take advantage of excess nutrients caused by overfeeding. And in the same way, carrying out our regular water changes can help keep algae under control by again, removing those excess nutrients, excess nitrates out the water. One of the best ways to keep algae under control is to add live plants. Live plants can outcompete the algae for the nutrients and essentially starve the algae out. Although you won't completely eradicate algae by having live plants, you will keep it under control. And that really should be our aim. So it seems that algae is something particularly newer shrimp and fish keepers tend to worry about, especially if they're setting up their first aquarium. And if I could reach out to any brand new fish or shrimp keepers, I would say to them, don't worry about the algae. It's perfectly normal, it's perfectly natural. In the next day or two, I'm going to be setting up this small aquarium here for some blue dream shrimp. I have absolutely no doubt that during the first few weeks and months, this tank will get algae. The trick is A, not to stress on it, 
and B, to know how to keep it under control and to know what to do when the algae does come, because it will come. In a similar vein, I would always recommend to new fish and shrimp keepers to grow live aquatic plants, because live plants, as they grow, they absorb excess nutrients out of the water and make it harder for algae to grow, especially fast growing and easy to grow plants like Java moss. And if you want to know how to grow Java moss, you should definitely watch this video next. Thanks for watching.